Chief Justice to continue hearing arguments and challenge the House to House registration on Monday. Guyanese concerned at sudden influx of Haitians call issued for full fledged probe of Immigration Department. One dead, several injured in East Bank Demerara vehicular accident. And in sport, Jason Mohammed replaces Andre Russell for the first two 2020 against India starting tomorrow. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Peace on windows and doors. Fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals what good is history if you never change and what good is change if it doesn't make you better at Valvoline for the last 150 years we've been doing just that relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine backed up not just by science but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do Valvoline 150 years under the hood. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Good evening and welcome to this or Friday, August 2, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Ashley Scotland. Our top story this evening. Chief Justice Roxanne George Wilshire will continue hearing oral arguments in the challenge into the legality of the ongoing house-to-house -house registration brought by Christopher Ram. Today, arguments were made by lawyers representing Ram, while those representing the Guyana Elections Commission and the Guyana Bar Association will present their arguments on Monday from 9 a.m. Speaking with reporters after making his presentation, attorney at law Anil Nandalal, who is representing Ram, said the registration process is significantly colliding with the time frame for, time frame rather, for the holding of elections. He said the manner in which the registration process is being conducted is illegal beca because the commission is deregistering persons who are supposed to be on the database. Nandalal is contending that the cases were filed with the intention of delaying the holding of elections. There are a lot of misconceptions going on here. The lawyers are speaking about house to house verification. The lawyers are quoting from sections of the law that, are, that deal with the preparation of an electoral register and how you get people named on the OLE and the PLE, that we, are, we are not dealing with that here. 
we are dealing basically here with the registration process and significantly that registration process cannot be completed for the holding of elections within the time frame. We are already on borrowed time. As you were informing the PDCCJ judgment, the time for holding election was 21st of the, um, March 2019. That has long gone. The leader of the opposition has said repeatedly that they are not going to go back to Parliament to get an extension. So that option is not available. Foreign Secretary Carl Brinage seems to have broken ranks from the hardline position taken by the caretaker government and has now agreed that the Caribbean Court of Justice was clear when it set September 18 as a definitive timeline for the holding of regional and general elections. Foreign Secretary Carl Greenwich has appeared to have broken ranks with the caretaker administration's position on the rulings of the Caribbean Court of Justice. Greenwich, who served as foreign minister up until recently when the courts ruled that as a dual citizen, he hold that position illegally, was at the time a guest on the club spun 24-7, where he belatedly agreed that the Trinidadian court has set definitive timelines for the holding of regional and general elections. The president had stated that the court could not instruct when general elections must be held because the Elections Commission is an independent agency. And what, you are, what you are faced with is that an outside date by which the court is saying you must have an election by such and such a date. It is now July and we are carrying a, a, a battle. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that, and I certainly agree that uh, the court has made the decision, but what I'm saying to you is that the court has said the election must be held by September the 18th, which does not justify you starting a war today. The Trinidadian court has ruled that Article 1066 of the Constitution must be activated on the successful passage of the confidence motion. Article 1066 states that the cabinet, including the president, shall resign if the government is defeated by the vote of a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly on a vote of confidence. The article requires the resignation of the cabinet, including the president, and that an election shall be held within three months. The unexpected influx of Haitians within the last seven months has prompted the call by the opposition party for a probe into the Immigration Department at the Ministry of Citizenship. Details from Zandi Ramatar. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdu has called for a full-fledged investigation into the Immigration Department at the Ministry of Citizenship. He raised concern that the figures have been increasing in the arrival of Haitians through the Cherry Jagan International Airport. It has been reported that some 8,000 Haitians have entered the country with just a few departing. Jagdu suspects that the influx of foreign nationals is being registered during the house-to-house -house registration process. It has morphed from what I believe into people smuggling ring into an attempt to get people registered for elections. That is what it has morphed into. But whatever the reason, whatever the reason it requires a full-fledged investigation. So I've heard that you have to pay, the Haitians have to pay 5,000 US dollars to come and get new documents from which they can go elsewhere other places. If you look at just 8,000, take out the 6,600, just 8,000 of the people had to pay 5,000 US dollars each. This is 40 million US dollars. 40 million US dollars. That's the magnitude of this could be the people smuggling ring that is now part of one to tamper with the elections, probably register, get a vote, and then leave illegally. Jagdu said too many people are arriving as visitors and are not leaving within the stay of six months. Jagdu afforded a claim that some of the foreigners are offered jobs which would require them to be granted work permits and tint certificates. How these documents are issued to the foreigners could call into question whether there might be collusion with some officials at the Immigration Department and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Clearly there has to be collusion with some officials at immigration. Because when a man comes into the country, you still go to immigration and say, where, where are you staying? You still have to go through that process. And they would say, oh, I'm staying at a hotel or at a relative or something. And they must have seen this pattern every single day. This is more than hotel rooms that we have for people if they put, they're staying at the hotel. That alone should say to immigration, you're going, coming to Ghana, you don't have an intended place of a, to stay, so raise a red flag. 
but nothing has happened. 8,600 came in, and they're going to Sunflower Hotel, etc. And, and I don't know where else. Take them there. So that's one. Two, we should have a full-fledged investigation of GRO. Now, this department comes under the Ministry of the Presidency and Felix. I don't trust Felix. i would make it clear. Felix is un untrustworthy. I don't trust him. And he has a department there that falls directly under him that had been working on digitizing people's records at GRO. And I heard there are others there who might be responsible for issuing fake documents, birth certificates. There should be a full-fledged investigation at GRO. Figures published today in sections of the local media revealed that of the over 8,000 Haitians who arrived here over the past seven months, only 13 left the country. The government, as well as Minister of Citizenship Winston Felix, who has responsibilities for immigration, have not been commenting publicly. As a matter of fact, earlier this year, the government amended the Immigration Act to allow Haitians an automatic six months stay in the country. However, thousands who came and have already completed their six months have not left the country and there seem to be no record of their departure. As public suspicion continue to grow over the increased influx of unskilled foreign nationals into Guyana and no records of them leaving the country, close to 200 Haitian nationals arrived in Guyana this afternoon on a COPA flight from Panama. Already in excess of 8,000 arrived here over the past seven months and immigration records have shown that just 13 departed. On a visit to the Chetty Jagan International Airport today, this newscast was reliably informed that close to 200 Haitian nationals who were in transit in Panama from Haiti arrived about 14, 30 hours on a COPA flight. When we attempted to interview some of the arriving Haitians, we were met with hostility from persons who are transporting the Haitians in heavily tinted vehicles. Among those arriving are many women and children. Have Yankee people have more than five years in Guyana, never have paper. E Asian people pass one day have paper in Guyana. This is lie. Some people lie. What is this? This is lion. Kuliba is stupid lion. Enga, me no Asian. I don't know what country me from. Me no Asian. Just I'm living in Guyana. I have my family in Guyana. One Guyanese passenger who traveled to Guyana from New York on the very COPA flight and who preferred to remain anonymous raised her concerns on the reason for such a large number of Haitians arriving in the country on just one particular occasion. Now just now it came in just now. The rest of them only come maybe about. I mean, the flight had 33 seats. 33, 33, and six on, and six on the side. So it was so good. Definitely about 150 there. They're going to be coming out just now. We all came out so far. Some other individuals we spoke with argue that the Haitians are coming to Guyana the legal way, staying in the country for at least the six months as was agreed upon by CARICOM. However, based on current statistics, over 8,600 Haitian nationals arrived in Guyana between the period of January to July 2019. Of that amount, the statistics show only 13 Haitian nationals returned to their homeland. On Thursday, the 25th of July, 18 persons confirmed intentions to return home. However, on the COPA flight, no one turned up. The following day, 78 persons were scheduled, but only one person went back. On Tuesday, the 30th of July, eight to seven Haitians who came to Guyana booked to return home. As before, only one went back. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. Meanwhile, the People's Progressive Party has called for public condemnation of what it described as appalling statements made by two senior APNU AFC coalition government officials relative to the daily disclosures about thousands of foreign nationals entering Guyana with no record of them leaving. Minister of Citizenship Winston Felix has been quoted as saying that he believes that the Haitians are using Guyana as a stepping stone to other countries including Brazil, Suriname and French Guyana. 
But the PPP said it is alarming that he, that this is the position of a minister who should be concerned with the correlated issues of national security and human trafficking. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Winston Jordan has been reported as saying he's willing to ignore Guyanese labor and choose foreigners if they're willing to work for less. The PPP said this position by a finance minister is effectively supporting the displacement of Guyanese from the job market at a time when Guyana has recorded 30,000 jobs lost in the last four years is unacceptable. The People's Progressive Party, PPP, believes that there is a massive people smuggling racket and inaction cannot be the order of the day. This is an issue that was raised a year ago and the APNU AFC coalition has refused to address it. It said that the alarming statistics on the number of Cubans as well as Haitians who cannot be accounted for since entering Guyana caused the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs in 2018 to summon Minister Felix and then Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich on June 13, 2018 to answer point questions with regards to possible human trafficking. The Parliamentary Committee examined statistics provided by Minister Felix himself for the period 2015 to April 30, 2018. The immigration figures showed that a total of 93,374 Cubans arrived in Guyana, but only 76,663 were recorded to have left, which meant that 16,711 were unaccounted for. It said that the more recent exposés in the Kaishur News detailing the arrival of over 8,600 Haitians in the last seven months have focused on one group of foreign nationals. The issue at hand involves other nationals, including, including Cubans. The party said that this may just be the tip of the iceberg. The PP is reiterating its call for a full-fledged investigation into this matter and calls on President David Granger to abandon his usual posture of silence in the face of the scandals embroiling his administration and address this matter with urgency. Still to come after the break, one dead, several injured in East Bank Demerara vehicular accident. And in sport, Jason Muhammad replaces Andrew Russell for the first two 2020 against India starting tomorrow. This and more in return. Stay with us. Westside, Saturday, August 3rd, it's one and move. Boxing and Comedy Jam. Eight bouts of boxing with boxers from Georgetown, Linden, Rose Hurl Burbies, and Virgin Ogen. The boxers fight for gifts and trophies with special live stand-up comedy by Jumpy Jones and friends. With music by Slinger's family. One and move. Boxing and Comedy Jam. Saturday, August 3rd at Virgin Ogen Rice Mill Tarmac. Flight time, 9 p.m. sharp. One and move. Tickets are $1,000 in advance and more at the door. Brought to you by Polo Bear and Virgin Ogen Boxing Jam. And Slinger's 101.1 Power FM. Yet one or more. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Excuse me, Uncle, tell me something. 
How credit can afford to buy so much thing from I only now walk no way. It's because now we introduce our new discount card. Apply oh. now for your discount card at Tayo Future Shop. Every time you shop using your discount card, your percentage increases. Start from 5% off. Your next purchase, 7% off. Then, 10% off, etc. Until you start getting wholesale and factory price. Check in store for more details. Conditions apply. Hey, me get me tie your discount card. <laughs> Wait, man. Why you gotta do next, man? Buy the whole entire store? Did you know that John Lewis Styles carries back to school items? Besides clothing and footwear, you can also get lunch bags from 3,500, backpacks from 4,500, and pulley backpacks from 10,995. All for the same price or less than buying online, and it's already here. Also, get a chance to win one RCA tablet every week in August. Enter to win with every $5,000 you spend. That's four tablets you can Google homework with. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Welcome back. You are watching MTV's News Update. As concerns continue to brew over the influx of Haitians into Guyana under questionable circumstances, approximately 150 more arrived today on a flight from Panama. Caretaker Minister of Finance Winston Jordan at a recent event confessed that foreigners are coming into Guyana and are working for far less than Guyanese accept, and as such, he would prefer to hire the foreigners. Jordan's comments are not resting well with many Guyanese, including politicians, since the country's unemployment rate has been ballooning over the past four years. One such person who took offense to Jordan's statement is Jack Dio, who told reporters that the caretaker minister's statement was shocking. Did you ask him if this is the government policy that we must allow immigrants to come in to undercut the labor market? I hope the TUC here is that, that we must undercut Guyanese who are working. So I hope you, well, th this is shocking to me. I didn't realize he actually said that that he is saying that bringing in immigrants here it would, because they work for cheaper will be beneficial to the economy so that they can undercut Guyanese laborers because they work for less wages than they do. So our people must not get employment or they must lower their wages to match those of the immigrants who are coming into work. Jagio further pointed out that the matter is one which needs to be examined extensively. Further concerns and well-being of Guyanese are what should be the government's prime responsibility. If this is the justification of this government, then I don't know. It's shocking for me personally because I thought our aim is to first of all look out for our people, Guyanese, our Guyanese and to ensure that progressively they get better paying jobs and more jobs. Better paying jobs, not to try to bring in people to undercut their salaries. This is a shocking revelation to me. Do these people think before they speak what they want for Guyana? Then why not just bring 500,000 people from abroad and just at these numbers we'll get there and we'll be a minority and say, okay, they'll work for for uh, $1,000 a day, because some countries you have people where $1,000 a day is a lot of money, bring them and let them work, and then we must all kick brick on the road, Guyanese. You know, to use a colloquial <laughs> expression, we must kick brick and walk around, right? Jordan specifically mentioned of nationals of Nigeria, Cuba, Haiti, and neighboring Brazil and Venezuela being afforded jobs in carpentry and plumbing. According to recent figures from the International Labour Organization, Guyana has an estimated unemployment rate of almost 23%. The agency also found that the total resident population aged 15 and above was 550,831 with the total employed population being 217,068. It also found that figures 166,873 or 62% being males and 104,195 or 38% being females with jobs. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. 
The driver of a Route 42 minibus is now dead following a horrific two-vehicle smash-up along the New Hope Public Road East Bank de Marara earlier today. Dead is 59-year-old Oswald Roberts, known as 04, of Kurukururu Suicide Linden Highway. The accident involved the minibus and a pickup at about 7 hours 30. Based on information received, the minibus was heading to Georgetown while the pickup was proceeding in the opposite direction. While information remains sketchy, it was reported that the minibus collided with the pickup as it was overtaking another vehicle at a fast rate. As a result of the collision, several passengers of the minibus were injured along with the driver whose condition was deemed serious. They were all taken to the Diamond Diagnostic Center where Roberts died. The injured passengers were stabilized and transferred to the Georgetown Public Hospital. Investigations are ongoing. Opposition leader Bart Jagdia continues to demand the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Godfrey Stacia, to make public information on the sale of want of entry vehicles. Opposition leader Bart Jagdew has again issued a call for the Ghana Revenue Authority to disclose information on the disposal of want of entry and other vehicles it seized. He claimed some 300 vehicles were sold without going to tender or public auction. Jagdew believes that the vehicles were siphoned off to government officials, relatives and those connected to the APNU AFC administration. You should ask the Minister of Finance about what's going on at GRE. Something we've been calling for. Is it true that over 300 vehicles that came in that was that the government got or took possession of seized that over 300 of these vehicles were sold outside of the auction and not gazetted if not how many because our information it's over 300 then what call, why didn't you gazette the, them? Why didn't you put them in the auction? And, uh, and then who were they sold to? And at what price? If we only get answers to that, that, th those questions, it, it could unravel this whole government. Commissioner General Godfrey Stacia has failed to issue public information on the matter, even after repeated calls from the opposition leader. Jagdew has provided information for two vehicles, which were registered on the same date and carried sequential registration numbers. The vehicles were said to be sold at a cost of $250,000. There was no publication about the sale of these vehicles in the official gazette, as is required if they were sold by public auction. For Two, three hundred thousand dollars for a, a new vehicle. But they didn't go through no auction. They just got it by virtue of contacts. It runs into billions of dollars of lost revenue. And that's not privileged taxpayers' information. Because that's assets seized by the state which should be disposed of in a transparent manner. And why is it that on these registration forms or the, in, the, in the GRO, they're leaving out the section, just creating a blank, leaving out all the details from the, the part where it says custom details, because that will explain how the people got their vehicle, whether they imported it themselves or they bought it from the government. Why? This is a huge, huge scandal. I've dealt with others too, the liquor and stuff, because this is not just vehicle. It's almost anything they seized. They, now, it was liquor, it's vehicle, it could, other luxury goods are going to a privileged few people. The Ghana Police Force today issued wanted bulletins for four men in connection with allegations of murder and rape. The men are 24-year-old Farouk Khan of Baidarabu Road, Bartika, Dylan Fitzgerald Batson, 27 of Central Amelia's Ward, Linden, Carlos Hackett and Winston Rodney. Khan is wanted for the murder of Pirion Bob, which occurred on April 21, 2019 at Kurubang, while Batson, 27, is wanted for rape, which occurred on November 14, 2018 at South Amelia's Ward, Linden. Hackett is wanted for raping a child under the age of 16 while police say occurred bit which rich brother police say occurred between June 1 to 30 2017 at Wismar scheme Linden while 35 year old Winston Rodney known as skinny of Pomeroon is wanted also for raping a child under the age of 16 between July 1 to 31 2019 at Lamp Island Kwakwani Upper Burbies anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of the suspects is asked to contact the nearest police station or call 911 the police promise to treat all information with the strictest confidence. 
A fire suspected to be electrical in nature this morning completely gutted a house at Tain Burbees. Troy Elias, 32, his wife and three children are now homeless. iNews Guyana reported that around 10 hours 30 today, the neighbors noticed a fire on the GPL meter outside of the house. They alerted the man's wife, who was at home with her three children. By the time, the fire had already spread to a curtain. Before she knew it, the entire house was engulfed in flames and the woman was forced to rush herself and her kids to safety. The fire service was summoned, but by the time they arrived, the house was already destroyed. Elias, a taxi driver and a mechanic, was not at home at the time of the incident. However, he received a call from his wife informing him of what happened and he quickly returned home. The family was unable to salvage anything. Here is Celine Griffith with MTV's Court Rundown. A former Guyana Defense Force officer and a cashier attached to the Woodlands Hospital who allegedly faked the robbery were each sentenced to two years in prison. Hanif Peters, a 34-year-old security guard of Easel Penitence, and Suzanne Daniels, a 35-year-old cashier receptionist of Canal No. 2 Poldor, West Bank de Marara, were found guilty of stealing $1.4 million from Woodlands Hospital on August 31, 2017 at Carmichael Street. According to reports, on the day in question, Daniels was taking the day's money to her supervisor when she alleged that she was robbed by a man. The matter was reported to the police and during their investigations, it was found that the woman lied and that she and Peters had planned the robbery. In court today, Daniels attorney George Thomas pleaded with the court stating that his client is the sole breadwinner for her three children and is extremely sorry for her actions. However, Peters maintained his innocence disregarding the fact that there was substantial evidence against him, including an eyewitness as well as phone records between the two defendants. As such, Susan Daniels was handed a two-year suspended sentence. This means that if she commits any offense between the next two years, she will be taken to jail to serve the sentence. Hanif Peters was also handed a two-year sentence, but without the suspension. In another matter... A minibus conductor and local singer was today hauled before Magistrate Faith Magassi to answer to a robbery under arms charge. 26-year-old Farley Reed of B Field Sophia Georgetown pleaded guilty to the charge against him, which read that on July 31 at Parade Street, Georgetown, while being armed with a knife, he robbed Connor Haynes of an iPhone X cell phone, value $290,000. According to reports, on the day in question, Haynes, who is a foreign national, was walking along Parade Street, when Reed came up from behind him and holding the victim at knife point, relieved him of the phone. The defendant then attempted to make good his escape but was nabbed by two public-spirited citizens and the stolen phone was recovered in his possession. In court today, Reed explained that he was walking along Parade Street when he saw the white man. He further stated that he did not know what came over him to commit the act but that he was frustrated due to financial problems. Police prosecutor Christopher Morris urged the court to consider the fact that the knife was used during the crime as well as it being intentional. Reed, in his plea of mitigation, claimed that he operates a shop at his home and is also a local recording artist. To prove his case, Magistrate Magasti made him sing one of his songs in court. The lyrics of the song entailed being a positive youth and staying away from crime. For this, the Magistrate told Reed that he is singing about positive things but doing the opposite. As such, Farley Reed was sentenced to two years imprisonment for the offence. Finally, a shop owner today appeared before Magistrate Shardell Isaacs Marcus and pleaded guilty to two firearm-related charges. Colwyn Knight, 31 of Festival City, Nartumveld, confessed to the two charges which read that on July 30 at Melange Landing, Kainini River, he had a 12-gauge single-barrel shotgun along with two matching cartridges without being the holder of a firearm license at the time. Reports indicate that on the day in question, police acting on information received went to a shop at Melange Landing where Knight was living. A search conducted at the property revealed the firearm and ammunition in the bedroom of the defendant. The court further heard that Knight allegedly claimed ownership of the firearm and was arrested. When given a chance to speak, Knight stated that he bought the gun for protection, since his father, who was a gold miner, was recently robbed by armed men. As such, the magistrate deferred sentencing until August 8 and ordered a probation report to be prepared in favor of Knight. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sport Update and more. Stay with us. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. 
FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermites free and water resistant. Enjoy one year factory warranty along with our after sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. The Ghana Elections Commission will commence house-to-house -house registration in your area soon. You must register if you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or registration. 14 years and older by the 31st of October 2019, a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for a period of no less than one year preceding the qualifying date. If you were previously registered, you will need to register again. Look out for GCOM. Make it your responsibility to get registered. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy. Contact the nearest GCOM registration office or visit our website, www.gcom.org.gy. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Ready to ride a way winner? A brand new motorcycle with ultra lubricants oil and go it's so easy purchase any ultra lubricants at an authorized dealer get your coupon fill it out drop it in the box and you can be one of six lucky ultra winners to ride off on a bike and here's the secret tip get two chances to win when you purchase ultra power max 4t right away a winner oil and go with ultra lubricants promotion runs from 1st of march to the 31st of august conditions apply see press and facebook for details ultra lubricant distributed by industrial supply of guyana inc and available nationwide Cricket West Indies interim selection panel has named Jason Mohammed as the replacement for Andre Russell in the first and second matches of the My Team 11 2020 International Series, co-sponsored by Skoda and FINA. Mohammed, the experienced 32-year-old, has so far played 90 20 internationals and also captained the West Indies in T20 internationals and in the 50-over format. Russell was named in the original 14-member squad for the first and second matches T20s, subject to him passing a fitness assessment prior to the series. The all-rounder experienced some discomfort while at the GT20 tournament in Canada and informed the interim selection panel of his unavailability for the upcoming series. West Indies are the reigning ICC World T20 champions and will face India at the Broward County Stadium in the United States on Saturday and Sunday. The final match will be played at the Guyana National Stadium Providence next Tuesday the first ball being bowled at 10 hours 30. Chelsea Lee, reporter of MTV, Sports Update. 
After two days of training camp earlier this week, coach Floyd Reefer disclosed he is quite happy with what he has seen from the West Indies players ahead of the India Tour of West Indies. Reefer said the team is young and they like to mix the experienced players with the youth. He added they have a very good blend and are looking forward to the matches in Florida. Players like Kieran Pollard and Sunil Narayan are making a return to the team as well as the captain Carlos Brathwaite and they have a lot of experience at this level and in this format. Reef informed camp has been going really great so far. West Indies are in Fort Lauderdale this week and will face India in two matches at the Broward County Stadium tomorrow and Sunday from 10 hours 30. With Chris Gale leaving for the Jamaica Talawas, Carlos Brathwit will be captain in the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots this season and says he cannot wait for the season to get on the way on September 4. Brathwaite said he is very excited and he thinks they had a good last couple of years where they challenged really well on the field and they went to the final and then they made it to the playoffs as well. He added this year is about trying to continue that same thought process, that same set of game plans and to try to be as attacking as they could potentially be. Gale was a big part of the recent success the Patriots have achieved but he has now moved back to his native Jamaica Talawas. Even without Gale, the Patriots have a very strong and experienced squad for the 2019 season. The Patriots will be looking to make it to the knockout stages for a third successive year. Carlos Brathwaite will be playing for the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots at the 2019 Hero Caribbean Premier League. The tournament runs from September 4 to October 12. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. Guyana's female footballers will be in action from tomorrow at the St. Ignatius Sports Ground Lethem when Theresa and George Bob, in collaboration with the Rupununi Football Association, host an under-17 female round robin 7A side tournament. The tournament scheduled from August 3 to 31 will kick off at 16 hours, with the following seven participating teams battling for the championship trophy and medals. Mokomoko FC, Rising Stars, Gladiators, Rush Saints, Terminators, Far East Sports Club, Putarno Sky Kings FC and Tabatinga FC. According to the sponsors, Theresa and George Bob, they decided to come on board with the RFA for this inaugural tournament to help further develop the game and to have more female participation in the sport. The matches will be played for a 50-minute duration with 10 minutes allotted for half-time. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. Rory Burns' maiden test entry led a determined England batting effort on the second day of the first Ashes test against Australia at Edgbaston. The left-handed opener, playing his eighth match, battled through an attritional day for 125 not out. With Joe Root making 57 in a second wicket, in a second wicket stand of 132 and Ben Stokes an unbeaten 38, England reached 264 for four, trailing by 17. England had slices of luck. Burns was on 21 when he would have been LBW to Nathan Lyon had Australia up to two review, while Root survived the James Pattinson delivery hitting off stump but not dislodging the bales when he was on nine. Those incidents were, un were characteristic of a day when Australia bowled well for little reward in front of another noisy crowd that celebrated every England run and basked in the warm evening sunshine. Only when they persuaded the umpires to change the ball did the tours have a period of success with Joe Denley and Joss Butler falling in the space of four overs. Benz, but Stokes, given a hero's welcome after his performance in the the World Cup final joined Burns in an unbroken stand of 73 for the fifth wicket. It leaves England in a strong position, even if they are likely to need a healthy first innings lead to negate the disadvantage of batting last on a pitch already offering sharp turn. President of the Guyana Cycling Federation, Horace Boros, has confirmed that Brabishan Jonathan Ramsuchit of Trojan Cycle Club will be participating in the 13th edition of the Junior Cycling Championships in Bartica next weekend. The championship kicks off on August 10 to 11, and Ram Suchit, who represented Guyana last year, is hoping to make his country proud. Meanwhile, the list of countries set for participation continues to grow. Barbados's lone competitor would be Adam Marshall, while Bermuda has confirmed Nicholas Narraway, Alexander Miller, Liam Flannery, and Nazarai Fox, and St. Martin will be sending Noel Kiani, Arison Kale, Carty Kenny, Sanon Wilson, and Thomas Roderick. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. 
Arsenal have signed Ivory Coast winger Nicolas Pepe from Lille for a club record fee of £72 million. The 24-year-old has signed a five-year contract at Emirates Stadium after having a medical on Tuesday. Pepe scored 35 goals in 74 league and made one appearance for Lille, who he joined from Angers in 2017. He becomes the fourth most expensive signing in Premier League history after Manchester United duo Paul Pogba, £89 million, and Romelu Lukaku, £75 million, and Liverpool Liverpool defender Virgil van Dijk, £75 million. More news after the break. Stay with us. Over the years, ISG has been providing all sectors across Guyana with quality products and outstanding customer service. Proud distributor of NP and Ultra lubricants, engineered for tropical conditions. International trucks and parts, leading the change. SEM machinery. A Caterpillar brand, SKF bearings and mounted products, Napa batteries, Tide power generators, discover the greatest source of power. Industrial supply of Guyana Inc., the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to regional and international news. In the region, the head of Brazil's National Space Research Institute says he will be sacked after a public row with President Jair Bolsonaro over the scale of the deforestation in the Amazon. Ricardo Galvao had accused the far-right president of Cardis for questioning the institute's data. It showed an 88% increase in deforestation in June compared with the same month a year ago. Mr. Bolsonaro said the institute was smearing Brazil's reputation. Brazil's Ministry of Science and Technology has confirmed Mr. Galvao's de departure, although it is not clear whether he had quit or been fired. On international scale, customs officials in Germany have announced the country's largest ever cocaine haul at the port of Hamburg. Over four tons of the drug were being transported from Montevideo, Uruguay, to Antwerp, Belgium, when they were intercepted by authorities during a routine check two weeks ago. The shipment, listed as soya beans, was hidden in over 200 black sports bags inside a shipping container. The drugs have since been destroyed under strict security, officials said. It added that the Hamburg prosecutor's office were now investigating the intended destination of the container. German officials say the discovery reflects their growing ability to interrupt international drug smuggling. But they also warn that the size of the haul indicates that South American drug cartels are growing bolder. Hamburg is Europe's third biggest port and the largest in Germany. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 836. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbour Bridge and Burbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Chief Justice to continue hearing arguments in challenge to House to House registration on Monday. Guyanese concerned at sudden influx of Haitians call, ins, call issued for a full-fledged probe of Immigration Department. One dead, several injured in East Bank Demerara vehicular accident. And in sport, Jason Mohammed replaces Andre Russell for the first two 2020 against India starting tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Good night. <laughs>